all you cool kids. I hope you guys are enjoying your week. We have made it all the way to Thursday. It's our last day of instruction before we go on spring break. Hopefully you're gonna have a really fun staycation at home. Um, we are on day four of learning about the water cycle and how it affects our understanding of the weather. Today we're gonna to talk about using some of our background knowledge and new learning in measurement from our math unit and bringing that together with what we know about the weather and the water cycle and seeing how we can bring these two, um, two units of learning together. Perhaps you've heard the expression, it's raining cats and dogs. And maybe you ran to the window and you looked to see if there were a bunch of, of uh, dogs and cats falling down. Well, that wasn't the case, was it? That's an expression we use when it's raining really, really hard. But we don't use cats and dogs to actually measure rain, do we? How do you think that we measure rain? I want you to take a moment and you can pause the video now and you'll open up your own version of this Google slide presentation and in the circle, write down a couple ideas you might have about how we could measure rain. If we had a really big rainfall come in and we wanted to know exactly how much water fell from the sky, what might we do? Once you've added your thoughts, you can unpause the video and come right back. Since the time of the ancient Greeks, um, people have kept records about the rain. This helps them understand the world around them. So hundreds and hundreds, thousands of years ago, people knew how important the water cycle was and weather was to predicting um, important things like what the crops and the plants and animals were gonna do in their world. Records about rain help people decide which season is best to plant certain types of crops. Um, and they help them to understand a little bit about how they're gonna act in the weather. Meteorologists are scientists that use a lot of different instruments to learn more about and predict the weather. I'm gonna go back and go over some of the important words there. Meteorologist, that's a scientist that studies weather. They use different instruments. We know that instruments are tools, all right? So different types of tools to learn more about weather, so to understand how weather is happening, and also to predict the weather. To predict means to think and believe that something's going to happen. To say you think this is what's going to happen next without being able to actually be in the future. One of these instruments in the photos below is a rain gauge. It measures how much rain fell during a rainstorm. A rain gauge. Which one of you those do you think might be a rain gauge? Hmm. Let's keep learning and we'll go back to that. Rain gauges usually measure rain in millimeters or inches. Raise your hand if you remember learning about that in math last week. By looking at the level of water in the graduated cylinder. Ooh, a graduated cylinder must be a tool and the measurement lines, you can determine the total rainfall. For example, if it rained hard all day and you looked at your rain gauge, the level, level of water might rise to the half inch mark. This means that a half inch of rain fell on the ground in that spot. So one of the things that we remember about using rulers is that we use these hash marks to help us determine where the end of something falls. So they're telling me in this passage that if I use a graduated cylinder to collect the water, I can have a ruler inside and I can use that ruler to find the, the measurement of the rain. If you have time this weekend, your teachers, your second grade teachers wanna challenge you to create your own rain gauge. When you open up the slides, you'll see the instructions printed here as well as a video. And now let's go back to those rain gauge pictures. Which one was the real rain gauge? The answer is all of these are homemade rain gauges that people all around the world have been able to create out of homemade materials. So you don't need to necessarily worry about going out to a hardware store or bothering your parents to take you to Lowe's. 
because we know nobody wants us out at Lowe's right now. You can create one at home. All you're going to need is a few simple materials, and if you find that you don't have the materials that they're mentioned on the video at the end of these slides, you can try to come up with your own adaptations and ideas. You'll need some sort of container to collect the water in, and you'll need some way to record and measure the rain. So whether that be you're inserting a ruler or you're just copying down the ruler on a piece of paper and putting that and taping it onto your rain gauge, you'll be able to make your own homemade rain gauge. If you're able to follow these instructions and create your own rain gauge, then what would be really awesome is if you keep track of how much rain we receive over the next couple of days. You can chart your findings here. And next week, or when we return from spring break and we begin our units on graphing data, we'll be able to use some of your information to help the entire class better understand the weather in our area. I'm looking forward to seeing all of your homemade rain gauges and I can't wait to see what great information and data you collect about the rainfall in Greenville, North Carolina. Have a great day. I'll see you guys after spring break.